Well, folks, welcome to Coffee with Job. This is the last one. When I began this a few months ago, I never thought it would end up being 140. This is the 140th. Um, and if you are so inclined, uh, there's quite a few people who've been just started watching these recently. You can work your way back through them on YouTube or on Vimeo. Um, where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you once we've gone through this. No fact, I'll tell you now first. Um, I'm hoping to go back to Scotland in May for a month. So those of you who are in Scotland, hopefully we shall see you. And I'll take a break until then. I, I might do some kind of one-off things. Um, we're still doing the songs for Sunday every Sunday. But um, I'll tell you what I'm thinking of doing because a number of you have asked that we can just continue this. So it is, there's quite a lot involved in this. And, but I've been thinking a lot about the book of Revelation. So I think in, when I come back from Scotland in June, uh, we will start looking at the book of Revelation. And I was speaking this morning to the lawyers again and one, one of them said, and if you're watching, cheers for the idea as well had said that he thought revelation was particularly apposite in today's uh, culture. And I preached through it a couple of times and I actually find it a fascinating and encouraging book. But I'd love to go through it in these kind of short things, you know, five minute things just in, in some detail. So that's what I hope that we will do. Um, let's just finish off with these last words in Job. Job 42 verse 16. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so Job died an old man and full of years. He died an old man and full of years. The book of Job is about Job. It seems obvious. It's about him as a person. It's about the struggles he faced and everything else. But the book of, the Job, book of Job is also about evil. It's about worship. It's about suffering. It's about all of us. But most of all, the book of Job is about Jesus because the only answer to the suffering that Job faced and the only answer to the suffering that we face is Jesus. And that's where I found this so incredibly encouraging because one of the things that stands out, and by the way, I was asked again about the best commentary and this unquestionably Christopher Ashes, but I was asked about you know, what things stand out for, for, for me and apart from the astonishing beauty of the poetry, the suffering that Job went through and everything else, what stands out for me is that his friends talked about God and had a system. He talked to God. Now, I was just thinking about how to finish all of this and one of the great privileges of doing this have been those of you who've contacted me and particularly people who've been going through suffering. So I think of our friend Melvin Tinker who died and he wasn't the only one. There were several people who um, during this period of listening, either they or relatives have died. And I thought of a lady called Nada from Croatia who got in touch and who listened to these. She's in Australia now. And just this week, well, just this week she went to be with the Lord. Now, to watch her grow and develop in her faith, and I, I, don't, I didn't know her very well. I, I met her once and was deeply, she was very much on my heart and mind and Annabelle's as well and her family and everything else. So I'd write occasionally and the last letter she wrote me a fortnight ago, and she, in that, I mean, there's stuff that's personal. I don't share those things. But in that, she talks about listening to the podcast, including in Job. You know, she loved doing that. She talked about the struggles that she faced, and that's how Job was so relevant. And then she said this, and some of you will think this is um, sentimental. I don't think it is. Did I tell you that some months ago I could feel the blissfully and contented hug so warm and soft that Surely was a cuddle meant only for me. Unforgettable, and I won't forget it. I just wish that he would take me sooner 
rather than later? Well, he did. He did. That was written two weeks ago. She's gone. And I just, I find that just incredibly beautiful. You know, death is horrible. For Nada's family, for, for those of you who experienced the death of a loved one, it's horrible. You know, as some of you know, my father died last year. It's horrible. The separation, everything about it. Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus. He was angry. He came to defeat death. But the point is, he did. He did. I know that my Redeemer lives, says Job. In the end, he will stand on the earth. I will speak to him face to face. Now, says Paul, we see through a glass darkly. Then we shall see clearly. Well, those who have died have, less, have left us impoverished. But they are enriched. And that's a wonderful comfort. It was a great comfort to me to know that my father didn't have to go through the struggles he had to go through. Well, that's the story of Job. Um, Yeah, it's uh, an incredible story, just an incredible story about an incredible God. I pray that whoever you are, you may know him and you may know his peace. And, uh, you know, keep in touch. Songs on Sunday, every Sunday. Uh, we'll maybe do some other things over the next few weeks. And then in June, God willing, we shall return to Revelation. But... May the Lord richly bless you and be with you. May he give you peace. And I hope that many of you will live to be old and full of years. I, I quite like that. I love the idea of going to heaven. But, you know, it'd be great to serve the Lord on this earth for a good bit longer as well. So we shall see. But as I said, may the Lord be with you. Bye.